This episode of The Basic Filmmaker is brought to you by Two Dimensions. Here's some tricks and tips for being in front of the camera. My home has always been behind the camera, so when I first moved to this side of the camera about a year ago, I figured, no big deal. I mean, how hard can it be? I quickly learned that being behind the camera and telling someone what to do versus being in front of the camera and doing it are two completely different skills with different rules. So I got curious. I started researching and talked to people with experience. What I ended up with was 15 basic principles and techniques that can be learned in practice that work. I thought I'd share them with you. And note, these were developed for someone wishing to step in front of the camera who doesn't have experience or wishes to improve how they look when being filmed. Having someone with no experience watch this and expecting them now to be able to act a scene out is not going to happen. That's a different skill set. As always, for those viewers who may be attention span challenge, here's my 15 tips up front for doing this. Ego, talent, clothes, mirrors, position, posture, chins, glasses, hands, speech, confidence, life, talk, interest. Learn, practice, do. Now being in front of the camera is not something that comes naturally to most people. Like anything else, there are basics of how to film yourself and practicing those until you can do it better. But what do you practice? Just blah 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 until you mysteriously figure it out? Maybe so, but let me try and save you a few years. Talking to a camera is different than talking to a person. There's no one there nodding their head and acknowledging what you were saying and letting you know that what you are saying is being heard. A live person sees you in 3D and a live person can feel or sense the emotion or tone of what you are saying. Cameras don't do that. Cameras record an image and smash it into a flat two-dimensional pixels. Depth in pictures, video, and film is an illusion. Here, watch this. Also, cameras don't record live emotion that we as humans feel or sense when we're there, so although the rules of talking to a live person are there, there are additional techniques for talking to a camera so the other person gets what you're saying. First, let's just assume you know what you're doing technically. You have your camera set up, the lighting and sound are good, you've tested it all, and you're ready to record. You know where you're going to sit or stand, you've pulled yourself away from the back wall to give the shot some depth, and you mark that on the floor in case you have to move or fix something so you don't have to reset your focus or worse, shoot it, find out it was out of focus and now reshoot it or worse, not care, and post it anyway. You've checked that your frame properly, the focus and ISO and aperture are good and you remembered to clear all the background junk out of the shot. You know what you're going to say, have a script loaded on a teleprompter or an outline in hand, and you've practiced it know how it sounds so you don't record a bunch of blah 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 and have to do 30 takes until it sounds right or worse, edit it into 75 jump cuts every two seconds instead of planning it or even worse not care and make your poor viewer who ended up at your video just to learn about lens caps suffer through what should have been at most a two minute lens cap video which ended up being 30 minutes long as you talk on about how you love deep dish pizza, your last vacation, your opinions on music and how you hate videos that ramble on and on like I just did. So now you have all those technical details in place. And finally, it's time for you to walk in front of the camera, hit the record button, and say what you have to say. Well, that's the exact moment these 15 basic principles and techniques come into play. Ego. First, you're making this video for others. If you're not, then I have to ask, why are you posting it? Second, you should park your ego somewhere else and understand the following. No matter how much you like to hear yourself talk, no matter how interesting you think you are, no matter how good you think you look, the camera, more importantly, the person eventually watching your video doesn't give a shit what you think about yourself. They'll think what they see, they'll see what they see, they don't care what your eagle sees. So try your best to get over yourself and look and sound more legit to the viewer, which is why you were making the video anyway. Arrogance has no place in these types of videos. Talent. Hey, you are the talent. If you show up tired and hungry, it's going to come across in the video. I once had someone mention in a comment that I looked tired or drunk or something. That's because I had been working nonstop for 24 hours and then didn't take the time to eat before I shot the episode. 
It can happen, but if possible, try not to film yourself when you're tired or hungry. Clothes. Wear something that works. Notice, I didn't say don't wear something that looks stupid or funny or goofy or anything else. If you want to wear a t-shirt, a hat, a suit, a bunny costume, or a tuxedo, go ahead. But when you wear something that clashes with your set, the viewer's not going to like it. For example, don't wear a black shirt on a black background or a white shirt on a white background. It will make you look like your head is floating. If in doubt, film a few seconds and then look at it. Mirrors. We live in the age of high definition video and if you had food in your teeth, forgot to comb your hair, or have tons of dog hair on your black shirt, or have a booger hanging out of your nose, I promise you, it's going to be seen. So take a second and look in the mirror. You may even consider taking a minute to apply some makeup if you don't like how you look in your videos. Position. Just standing in front of the camera dead on straight throughout your episode doesn't look good as it can. Here's what a direct head on shot looks like. It's okay, but I think it looks much better if we add a little bit of angle to it. Here's a shot that is not a direct head on shot. I think it looks better and adds a bit of dimension to the shot. There's an old rule on how to stand in front of the camera when doing this type of lecture or training or informative video. Point one foot at the camera, put the other foot behind at a 90 degree angle, and look at the camera. This forces your body to be at a slight angle, adding some depth to the shot. It feels odd at first, but so does riding a bike until you've practiced it. This also comes in handy if you find yourself swaying back and forth, as this position restricts you from doing that. I can tell you this swaying back and forth thing can get very, very old. Posture. Stand or sit up straight. This is me being Mr. Slumpy. I don't look very confident about what I'm saying and I look a little dead. This is me being Mr. I don't want to be Mr. Slumpy. See the difference? If you're using a chair, which I used to do, don't lean back. Lean forward or sit on the front of the edge of the chair. It will look better. And don't swivel back and forth in the chair. It's really distracting. Chin. When you raise your chin up, it makes you look like you're trying to be cocky or looking down on the person watching. If you find yourself doing that, just lower your chin. This also allows the viewer to see your eyes, which is where the focus should be. Glasses. If you wear glasses, get them made with anti-reflective coating. Otherwise, all the viewer will see is the glare from your lights and not your eyes. You can also wear contacts or, if your sight isn't that bad, nothing at all. Also, before you shoot, clean your glasses. Any smudges or smears or particles will be picked up by the camera. In fact, these smudges and smears will actually create light things shooting out of your eyes. Hands. Do you suffer from FHS flying hand syndrome? Ah! I do it and it distracts viewers. So I got curious and looked into it. Mainly the response I got was, just don't do that. Well, that's nice, but the problem is until you are well practiced in not doing it, you will look stiff and unnatural. I just love this type of expert advice. Don't do it. I found a real expert and got some practical advice. The solution is simple. Just move your elbows in a bit to your body and that restricts your hand movement. It takes a little practice, but it's less distracting, and you still look alive. Remember, in these types of videos, you are the point of interest. Speech. Now you may have noticed we covered a lot and haven't gotten to the point where we say anything. Well, we're there, so let's talk about how you say what you're going to say. You can get crazy about how you speak in your videos. My advice is don't. All you have to remember is you are talking to someone and you want them to understand what you were saying. Just say things clearly. If you need to slow your speech down a bit until you get better at speaking, then do it. It just takes practice. Here's a voice tip from the experts. If you make a bunch of clicky sounds when talking, eat a green apple first. I covered that in a previous episode. Confidence. If you aren't confident about what you were saying, then I have to ask, why are you saying it? Well, you know, the Canon 5D Mark III is kind of a nice camera. I mean, you know, it shoots stuff and all, and I really don't know what all these buttons are for, but you know, if you leave everything on auto, it might turn out and wait, wait a second. Is this a 5D Mark III? Hold on. If you don't speak with confidence, no one will listen to you and no one will watch your videos. And if you aren't confident about your subject matter, then quit trying to make a video about something you don't know anything about. Or let the person watching know that you don't know about the subject, but have an opinion or advice on what you found so far. Case in point, 
One of my favorite channels that does this is Dave Dugdales. He knows an awful lot, has a ton of experience, and yet he always takes the time to tell you if he is talking about something he doesn't fully know about or is learning about himself. He even does that with confidence. Life. Emotion, energy, life, liveliness, there's a hundred words to describe this. As I said earlier, the emotional tone of a live person is not recorded fully on film. When I'm directing unexperienced people, I always have to get them to ramp up their emotions. The same goes for you. Just ramp it up a bit. If you're trying to be happy or sad, lively or dead, funny or not, you just have to crank it up so it comes through the camera. Let me show you. Emotion, energy, life, liveliness, there are a hundred words to describe this. As I said earlier, the emotional tone of a person does not come through on film. When I am directing unexperienced people, I always have to get them to ramp up their emotions. That is how I normally talk, and trust me, I'm a very lively person. It's not that I'm boring or dull, it's that the camera does not capture me as I am in real life. To compensate, I have to notch my liveliness up a bit to make myself normal. If you feel like you're overacting when you do it, just try it and see for yourself. I think you'll see what I mean. Oh, and one other thing. If you're not mad, try smiling once in a while. Talk. I don't quite know how to describe this any other way than this. If you are talking to your lens, your camera, the monitor, the teleprompter, the back wall, your feet, yourself, or anything else other than the person who will be watching your video, then your video won't come across to the end viewer as well as it could. Some professionals have all sorts of tricks for this, such as acting like they are talking to a parent, child, or family member, mental exercises before they talk, reaching some inner peace before they start, on and on, with a million million other solutions. I can't comment on whether those work or not, but I do know what does work. And I could spend a long time explaining all the mysterious mojo going on here. The physics of how the communication and motion you are using falls off and doesn't quite reach the sensor in your camera, and so on, but I won't. Just trust me on this one. The simplest and easiest way to make it seem to the end viewers, if you're talking to them, and the easiest to practice, is this. When you're set up and ready to go, start your camera and sound recording. Go to your mark, that's where you stand or sit when filming yourself. Pick a point from where you are standing, through the distance between you and the camera, straight through the lens, straight through the camera, to some point like the back wall. You want to talk to that point from where you are, straight through the lens and the camera, to that point. If you want to have someone stand behind the camera, or imagine some person standing back there, go ahead, but it's not necessary. Just talk to that point, and your video will look and sound better. Interest. Sure, your video should be interesting to your viewer. But don't spend all your time being interesting and forget to be interested. You should be interested that the person watching will understand what you are saying, demonstrating, teaching, or talking about. This is another mysterious thing that can change a video from boring into better. When directing people doing interviews or dialogue or voiceovers, when it seems just a bit dull, I tell them to be more interested in what they're saying and who they're saying it to. A lot of times, the whole thing comes to life just doing that. Learn, practice, do. If you want to be expert at playing an instrument, you need to learn a lot, practice a lot, and play a lot. If you want to be good at making videos or films, you need to do the same thing. Don't complain about not being able to create awesome music if you don't continually learn and practice and do. The same goes for filmmaking or anything for that matter. And that goes for cameras, lenses, lighting, story, scripting, screenplay, shooting, editing, color correcting, special effects, title, handling crews, directing, acting, using a stabilizer, and to the point in this video, talking in front of the camera. It takes practice. The acid test. The acid test was simple. Myself and others have used these principles and techniques to get better at being in front of the camera. Done. Now. I'm not saying this is all there is to know about being in front of the camera, and I'm definitely not setting myself up as an expert at being in front of the camera. I do, however, know these 15 principles and techniques work for anyone wishing to step in front of the camera and do better at getting their communication across to others. I hope that helps, and thanks for watching. The artist out of it, please, over there. Thanks. Thanks. It's just a reference shot to make sure we got it all. And then we're going to take a floating, floating hat shot. It will make you look like your head is floating. <laughs>